There we go. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It is the Swell Pro Splash Drone 4 review. Finally doing the flight test. If you missed the unboxing and setup and just really going in depth on it, setting it up at the table at home, go ahead and check that link will pop up up here. I'll go ahead and have the series as well up there because we're doing some ocean testing, you know, slamming it into the ocean, really seeing how waterproof it is and if that waterproof flip works, if it turns over. Also doing a range test and just some cinematic stuff and also a lift test to see how much this thing can actually uh, lift. But here it is here, gonna go ahead and set it up with you, get, get it ready to fly. And this is gonna be my maiden flight aside from just kind of a hover in my yard, making sure the thing can kind of fly. So we're gonna first do a compass calibration, show you how all that works. If you're dunking this much money into say a fishing drone or something that's waterproof for your boat, you really want to know how these things really work and that's kind of my specialty is just showing people how the things really work i mean just honest reviews and trying to make sure that you guys spend your money on something that you know is going to work so first things first they all come with this cool kind of foam carrying case really durable kind of like the carrying case the phantom fours come with if you're into the dji drones um, but remember this is the waterproof the new one from swell pro so this may be the one, even the controller's waterproof, the drone's waterproof. You can dunk it in the water, fly over the water without really having to worry about this thing. So we're getting the drone out. Remember, I got two batteries with this setup, if you saw my unboxing, so that's great. So we're gonna have potentially 60 minutes of flight time, and we're gonna test how much time really one battery lasts with you when we do this flight review. So for right now, we're pulling out one battery. I got my instructions in here. Definitely want to get my propellers out. Always good to have a second set of propellers just in case. So that's really all I needed to take unless you wanted to like charge your batteries up on the go. These two batteries are already charged so I don't have the charger in the pack but the charger will always also fit in here. Okay so before I put the propellers on uh, I need to do this compass calibration. So this is something that you really want to do uh, if you're this is the first flight because these things come from like China right. So you need to calibrate that magnetic compass so it kind of knows its orientation and where it is. For the accelerometer and the IMU, which are kind of like the sensors that detect level and stuff, those, you want to do those at home on a perfectly level surface that's not shaking like a concrete floor or something. So I went ahead and did those already before I came out. You don't have to keep calibrating the compass, just mainly for your first flight or if like it crashes or if you're going like maybe 100 miles away from your initial fly point okay so first things first uh, we want to put the battery in so open this guy up slide that battery in there remember the connections are going down push it in so you kind of feel a clip and then sliding this thing up and just clipping it in really tight whenever you clip this shut just check for dirt and sand especially if you're going in the water so this thing stays waterproof so battery is in for this flight, remember these antennas, they can go um, up or down. Uh, you probably wanna have them up if you're gonna be flying and landing on water. For this flight, I'm gonna secure them in the downwards position. So you just screw these little collars off. We're gonna hold in the power to turn the controller on until we hear a couple beeps. And that thing's on. Then we go ahead and push in the power to turn it on. So it's just a similar like click you see the lights come up and then hold you're going to see all four lights come up and then it's going to kind of make a noise and hopefully you can see that camera the gimbal is kind of calibrating itself and it's ready to go we're kind of waiting um, this one takes a while to link up especially since the phone actually has to link to this wirelessly to the controller it takes a little while to get that kind of wi-fi hotspot. Uh, giving the signal out. So remember this clamp just squeezes in. Unfortunately, the one that comes with it, don't know why, but it does not fit an iPad mini. Really would have liked that. They claim to actually be coming out with an iPad mini mount, so hopefully that comes out pretty soon. Anyway, turning on the phone, I'm gonna go ahead and record this for you right away so you can kind of see what's going on on my screen here. Click and hold on to our Wi-Fi. Turn it on, there it is, SWP BACB20. 
Just make sure that connects. SD Fly app, launch it. And really just waiting until it senses the drone is connected. There we go. So connection successful pops up and then we just wanna log in device. So here we go, here's our fly interface. So if we wanted to check out our map. Unfortunately, I just gotta say something here. In the manual for the Splash Drone 4, they show satellite imagery and they've mentioned that there's no satellite imagery yet for uh, Apple devices. All you get is like this street map. So if you're doing waypoints and stuff, you really wanna have like satellite imagery, right? So I'm not sure why they don't have that available yet. And they've also mentioned that the Android app still isn't available and working. So maybe uh, the Google Maps will be uh, on the Android as well. But for now, they don't have that uh, imagery map. So that's kind of unfortunate. And even to get the maps in, guys, um, you do have to basically manually set the IP for this connection that's wireless on the controller. And you have to set a certain gateway to even stream in these maps because that was a little bit difficult. I had to actually contact SwellPro and they actually had to tell me how to do it. So maybe something they can kind of take care of in their app or it's something they're trying to get together in their their manual. If you look at the screen here, guys, it's showing us we've got 10 satellites up there and everything should be good. Our voltage is 16.7 at the top right of the screen. And um, we wanna go into the settings, these three little dots at the top of the screen. And I wanna go into, that should be advanced settings here. So this is where we're gonna calibrate the compass. So I'm gonna go ahead and click calibrate. So make sure it's just on you know a level surface in the park or wherever you are. Level enough, it doesn't have to be perfectly level for this. I wanna confirm. We want to do horizontally, so I'm going to set this controller down so I can kind of lift this up. And just spinning it actually clockwise, I almost went counterclockwise. So you want to just spin this thing clockwise, hold it horizontally and rotate clockwise until the arm light flashes green. Okay. So we're getting some green flashing here, I guess. Maybe I did that a little bit too many times, but now we got to rotate it face down. So facing the front down, you know, it's like that because the battery compartment's going to be up top here. And then it says press calibrate when ready. So I'm going to press it there. Rotate vertically. Okay. So this is a little funny. I don't know, it says press calibrate when ready, but nothing happens. So I'm just gonna start spinning it. So as you can see, it looks like they need to do a little bit of stuff on their app. A little bit of uh, cleanup on their programming. Calibrate complete. Okay, well at least it says calibrate complete. So I guess we'll just take it clicking out of the screen here and looks like we're ready to fly. But the first thing we wanna do is after we calibrate, is you do have to turn it off and back on. Um, it does has aircraft initializing on the controller, please wait. So right down here on the screen. So a little bit different than what it's showing me up here. So what does that mean? Do I have to wait? There we go. Okay, so make sure after you do that, and even though it says complete on the screen here, you wait till that controller says complete because it might still be finishing up some of the stuff it's doing actually in the software on the drone. So something they can work on again. So now we can go ahead and put the propellers on guys. So remember clockwise and counterclockwise. Just want to make sure you got the right propellers for the motors. Push them down and turn them in so they pop up. Now these propellers are really sharp. So be careful with this when you're putting these on or even handling these propellers. They're extremely sharp. I did cut myself on one of the splash drones, the earlier versions, just from handling these because they're very sharp. So just be careful. Okay guys, so it's been about a minute. I'm gonna launch this Swell Pro app again. And you know, just stuff you need to do before you at least give this thing the first flight. So that's why I just like to go through all this stuff so you guys know. So you're having a little bit of difficulty with the instructions that come with or something. I'm gonna press on this little map icon on the top right, and that'll give us kind of our compass. Top right little icon here, those little lines up there. And then we wanna go into our video, 
and it's at defaulting at 2.7k resolution i do want to go up to 4k it's at 2k 60 so if you want to get like fast moving video that doesn't have that lag in it you may want to do the 2k 60 for action shots and stuff i'm going to do 4k 30 today just so you guys can see like how good it actually can be in 4k and how clear it is we're going to start recording here we can either press remember on the uh, phone screen there or we can just press this side of the controller right here and just click to start recording you're going to see the screen will go into its recording and that should be recording in 4k so we're just going to leave it in the gps mode that's just to make sure that when you let off the sticks it just kind of hovers there and knows where it is so we can either pull the sticks down and in to start the propellers and launch manually or let's just try this initial on screen option so i'm just pressing launch and then i'm going to slide to take off wow so even with all the calibration and stuff it did jump look at that about uh that's about maybe six feet away so definitely want to be careful with that if you're doing automatic launch okay so i'll have that video up already seeing i mean look at my phone screen guys i'm just gonna kind of fly around a little bit already seeing maybe a little bit of jittery in the phone screen it's not like entirely as stable as I thought it would be, you know? As far as the phone uh, fluidity is what I'm trying to say. I'm just doing a slow rotation to the left and right, and you can see that it's not super fluid on the phone. At least it's digital, but um, you know, that's the way it is. So I'm just gonna hover right here. You know, maybe the wind had something to do with it as far as how the the drone kind of launched because you know you see that flag there it is blowing a few miles per hour so maybe that was had something to do with it we're just going to kind of look at it while it's flying right here letting off the sticks and i just really want to see how this thing keeps its elevation it is really loud so keep that in mind guys this is not a quiet drone so even to talk to you i got to kind of back away from it so a very loud drone but you know, louder drones can carry more capacity. I'm just gonna kind of circle it with my camera, look at it real quick. Definitely don't wanna get close to these propellers at all, man, because that is super bright or super sharp propellers. Anyway guys, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. Putting this thing through its test, so hang in there with me. So you guys be the judge of like how stable that camera is and how good the video is even as i go through the screen you see how on my fpv here it's not as fluid as i'd like it to be but at least it's clear unlike their original analog was really scratchy right so it's hovering in place really good i haven't really touched it i've maybe brought it down a little bit to get in view but um it's keeping like an overall foot of altitude fighting that little bit of wind there so it's actually doing pretty good all right, so let's just kind of fly around and feel how this thing, see how this thing feels. You know, I can go slow, turn, just like any other drone. And just fly as slow as I want to. Turning around, this is full stick to the left. You can see that in the video and on the screen, you'd probably get a little bit dizzy if I kept doing that. But um, I'm just gonna kind of go full back let's see how fast it goes really looking for it to possibly hit the ground or something and how it keeps its altitude while we're going fast let's do a full throttle forward letting off now so it looks like it might take about um you know quite a bit of ways to stop just because it's uh it's like these people are right in the wrong spot when I'm flying <laughs> as usual anyways um so we're gonna just fly around a little bit I'm gonna give it a full throttle up so let's get close to it here and let's just punch it it seems pretty stable overall a little bit better than the other previous one so let's do a full throttle up and that thing will just go up I'll have the video up on the screen so you can see that vertical speed 3.5 
5 meters per second. Okay? So I'll get some cool video for you guys up there. Letting off the sticks. It's just going to hover there. Slowly rotate to the left. A little bit jittery on my FPV. Not really digging that. I'm going to try the antennas straight down like this. Straight forward and see if that helps the signal. Yeah, that helped the signal a little bit. Usually when antennas are pointing right at the drone, the tips, that's not good. So you can see how it's getting a little bit jittery. So that's it there, that video, soak that in guys. I'm gonna do a full kind of turn to the left so you can kind of see the mountain. You wouldn't even think this is Hawaii because it's so dang dry up here. But I'm on the side of a mountain, so you know, for those of you that think the gimbal's all out of whack, it's not. You see that cloud line? It is the mountain going up at like a, I don't know, 10 to 15 degree slope and then turning down to the valley of Maui here. Central Valley, there's the Kihei Wailea area. So that'll give you a good indication of the, the video and let's pull the stick straight down. And our vertical speed is about the same, 3.5 meters per second. So we'll let this thing come on down, take a look at that video, make sure it's stable. Pulling down, whoa, wow, okay. That wasn't so great. I kind of stopped and then I pulled down hard and let off and it was coming down a little too fast and hit the ground because there's no sensors, right? There's no ground sensors. So it's not like a DJI where it's gonna sense the ground at all. So something to take note of, not going to be able to sense anything around it except its altitude, GPS location and all that stuff. So that was pretty cool, man. Uh, let's see how fast this thing can get going. As far as going out, flying horizontally, full stick forward. I see the propellers in the view a little when it started going slightly. And horizontal speed, 9.4 meters per second. Okay, I'm gonna stop out here, letting off the right thumbstick and I haven't really seen that camera move at all, so that's great. I'm gonna push the left stick to turn our head a little more here. Looking good. And remember, we can also tilt our camera up and down, right? So the right roller here, I'll have that in my hat cam here. You pull that to the right, and you see how we can basically roll our camera down and up. So that'll go all the way down if we wanted it to. That's what you're gonna to have to do when you're fishing and if you wanna see the water in your bait when you drop it. Full stick forward here, coming back. Propellers are gonna be in the view for a sec. Come back, I'm gonna pull down as well and we're gonna let off right next to me. Here we are, right, go. Letting off and it took that thing about 10 feet to stop at its full, its full speed in this mode, okay? How are we doing on our voltage? So on the top right, I've got 14.5 volts of the phone screen. And if I look down here on the actual controller screen, it actually tells you how much flight time you have remaining. Hopefully that's in view. It says 13 to 14 minutes of flight time, okay? And you can also see the voltage up here, your satellites, signal, all that stuff, distance and speeds. So pretty cool. It also shows here there's 64% of the drones remaining and of course the flight time, like I was saying. Pretty darn cool, so, so far so good. Aside from a couple of those things, I mean, you know, you can fly as slow as you want or as fast as it can. Let's get over here and uh, try some other stuff. So say you have a boat and you wanna do these follow me functions. So I'm just kind of getting it up out of the trees and out of the park area. And I'm gonna press this follow me, let's see what happens. So pressing it once does nothing, I'm gonna press and hold it. Okay, follow me engaged. Okay, it's spinning around. And let's see what happens. What it's doing guys is it's following the GPS on this controller here. So you have to have this controller with you, say you wanna get the filming of a boat going through the water. That's what you've gotta do, okay? 
and it looks like the gimbal it doesn't have any kind of video recognition right there's no stuff like that so you're gonna have to still use your uh, gimbal controller this little roller on the right to go down and get say your boat or whatever you're filming in the water in view and then you can just hammer it you know maybe you want to probably have somebody riding with you in your boat then you just go ahead and drive around in your boat and let's see how good this kind of tracks definitely keeps me in center so that's good what i didn't mention is if you do if you do want to adjust the left and right of the camera that's what this roller here is for watch as i pull it to the left you see that so you can still do the left and right with the camera and up and down manually. So let me tilt these antennas a little bit more perpendicular there. And be watching the phone screen too, guys, to see if you know you like how it's performing and how the video is, so what you're seeing. So it looks like it's gonna follow really good. I'm just gonna jog a bit, you know, even though I'm not going very fast. See how that thing. So it's just kind of stuck in the sky following. It's not turning its head or anything like that. It just turned its head to zero in on the GPS of the controller. And, whoops, just had an SD card something. I don't know what happened there, but hopefully it's still filming. So um, if you want to do like a rotation, let's try that. So if you turn these controls on, if I just turn the right smooth control on just by pressing this, now watch what happens. I can kind of turn this knob here. There we go. I felt the vibration in the controller. And nope, it's not keeping me in view to do an orbit. So that looks like it's going to terminate the orbit. That's just going left and right roll. See what that's doing as I, as I roll this? When I do stop though, interesting. Watch when I stop it. It, it really quickly just jolts and recenters on me. So kind of interesting there. Hmm. I was kind of hoping it would do like an orbit. So what we might have to do is go into custom here. Let's try that. So if we pull this right uh, toggle down to custom it went back to where I was. Oh wow, now it's kind of doing an orbit on its own. It just like went right into doing an orbit. <laughs> That's weird. So what you're supposed to be able to do is um, go into the settings here when it's in custom. So let's go in, I'll have the phone screen up. If you go to orbit mode, select point of interest, then aircraft will fly to the selected point and start. Confirm. All right, what's it doing? Confirm. Already in this mode, okay. So this is a little bit confusing. So apparently it just thinks it has like a point of interest where it started that mode, you know what I mean? Okay, I want this to stop. How do I stop this? I'm gonna go out of custom here, go back into GPS. And that seemed to stop it, okay. So I guess that's what you gotta do. So not working as good as I'd like it to. A little bit wonky there. So I don't want this roller to be on and it, apparently it still thinks it's on. There we go. So make sure you gotta click this button to get out of this roller control. Okay, so I wish that was a little bit easier. Uh, what I might do is try that again. Tilt the camera where we want. And let's try that again without being in follow me mode not going to be in follow me mode for now we'll rotate the gimbal all the way down what's our flight time only six minutes left oh my gosh so here's the flag i want to track and i'll go into custom mode boom let's see if it can keep that flag in view wow video just got really garbly not so great video actually seems to have froze and there it just came back so you know it's a little bit to be desired still where's my flag at there it is okay so you just got to go into custom and do the orbit you got to fly over whatever you want to do first 
and um, still getting some garbly imagery. And when it's in this mode, let's see if I can kind of pull it back a little bit. There we go. Wider angle view. I'm just pulling back on the right stick. I can go higher, let's see. And let's get that view back in with the flag and stuff. Now it's just continuing to go backwards on its own. Kind of interesting. Let's see if we speed this up, can we? Got to press this normal smooth button again. There we go, we can speed it up. Okay, so you're gonna have to use these controls in like conjunction. That's getting a little bit quick, it's kind of scary. Slow down a little bit, buddy. <laughs> but there's the orbit, so you guys be the judge of that. It should still be, you know, controlling it and everything. I'm gonna come in a little. Okay, that's cool. I can kind of tighten up a little and then I have to, you know, adjust my camera again down. So none of this AI tracking that like DJI has, it's still using just like GPS points to track. But you can get some cool orbits if you want like distant shots on a boat and all that stuff. So let's get out of this mode just by pressing this toggle back up to the top and the drone immediately just stops. Okay, and then you want to make sure you get out of this roller mode, the smooth mode, because those will still start working by pressing that again. I know I'm repeating this. There we go. So it already wants me to return to home because it's low battery, but at least we tried the tracking and it does work well. So let's do a quick little return to home. I'm going to fly out here just a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to return to home here and let's see how close it lands to that H. Okay, so just pressing home and sliding. Oops, there we go. All right, so as soon as I uh, pressed return to home and slid it, it's starting to raise up to the designated altitude and you can choose that for whatever you want. I'm gonna point this camera all the way down. Let's see how the stability is all the way down. So this is what you do if you're fishing and dropping bait, you know? You'll have that camera all the way down. Let's see how close it kind of lands on its own onto this GPS spot. So this is going to be the what it where it thinks its home point is, the home point it took when it launched. And we'll see if we can move it around if it's going to land too close to that box and stuff over there. So coming on down, got the camera. Wow, the video just crapped out again on my FPV. So let's see, I don't want it to land there. I'm gonna move it around a little bit. I can still push up, turn it, all that stuff, right? So it looked like it was gonna land a few feet away. Letting off, I'll just let it land right here. And it does turn off the propeller, so that's good. Um, but geez, boy, let's see if our, our camera is still working. Yep, I was just taking video of the grass there. Um, but there you go, guys. That's how much wind is. It's only about five right now. You can see that flag over there in the video. It doesn't turn off the video, so I still have to turn it off. You can either press the button, remember, or let's just try press the screen, tap it on the screen to stop. And hopefully that saved the video. So I'll have that video up. Have a little message on the top left of the screen here let's click on it and it just shows you these warnings and i've got to press x on that to get that away on the screen it says battery critical land aircraft now let's have a look at our voltage uh, up on the top right of the screen we got 11.9 volts left up here can't really click on the battery um, so that was a pretty good initial flight test on the first battery remember i got two batteries I know this is going to be a long video, guys, but I want to get up back up there, take some pictures and stuff, um, do a couple more of the other functions, because there are these. If you look at here, hopefully my phone is still recording. If we go into this custom flight mode down here on that um, toggle, you can actually go into sport mode, attitude mode. We did the orbit, which was <laughs> it was kind of hard to figure that out headless or cruise mode. Okay, so this is the battery that I just pulled out and 
kind of kind of slightly warm to almost hot feeling what's weird about this one is i read that it's it's actually those 18650 cells in the instruction manual it says that these are those round cells so they're lithium ions not lithium polymer you know take that with whatever you want to take it with but it is quite warm and as you can see just clicking this once i do have just one blinking green light so we got that battery pretty darn low probably almost to zero with that flight and i will have had the flight time pop up guys on the screen when i landed that thing so you guys can see how long that flight was from i think almost to 100 percent maybe a little bit under because we did that initial compass calibration right so that took a while and some power this one is fully charged so let's pop this new one in and get up there and really finish this initial maiden flight review on this one guess what i'm going to do guys i'm going to go and turn on the um, electronic Im image stabilization just to see if that does anything turn that on i have no idea but just to give you guys a another option here it zoomed way the heck in so maybe i don't want to do that because the gimbal looked pretty pretty stable i'm just going to do it anyway just so you guys can see how that is so start recording here and let's launch manually this time. So I'm just gonna pull the sticks down and in. Starts the motors up. I do wanna see if these things shut off real quick before we launch. Just really quickly wanna see if, uh, if these things will shut off after maybe 10 seconds or so. Kind of a safety precaution, you know? But uh, doesn't really look like they're going to. I think it's been about 15, 20 seconds, so. Definitely not gonna shut off, um, but you know, just so you know. Let's go ahead and launch manually. So pushing up on the throttle stick. Wow, and it just keeps wanting to, it seems like it keeps wanting to fly back to that spot over there. So definitely be careful of that. And uh, you know what I wanna do first is I wanna try this drop mechanism here. Remember this thing has a dropper right there. So payload right here on the bottom left. So this thing is supposed to be able to hold like four pounds. This feels like maybe about a pound, maybe a little less. Okay, click and hold and push it up. There we go. So we're hanging that, I guess about a half a pound battery. Let's just try to fly around. So this would be a good use case if you're fishing, right? And you're trying to take your line out. That's a pretty dang heavy battery. So it is holding it. I'm just gonna get it like over me. Yeah, you can definitely hold some heavy weight. I'm gonna get it over me and then drop it. So I'm gonna have to hold in this payload here. Hold it. Woo, there it goes. <laughs> well, that works. All right, cool. So you know the payload mechanism works really good for some heavy stuff. Remember this thing can do what they claim is about four pounds. So over four pounds, like four and a half pounds. So we're gonna try that in a lift test. So make sure you guys hang in there and subscribe and click your notification bell on so you know when that's happening. Anyway guys, we have 20 minutes left to fly. This thing claims it can do 30 minutes, but I think that's completely unloaded. No camera, no drop mechanism. All right, what I really wanted to try here was some of these waypoint missions. Let me just click on the map. Here we go, zoom in. And this, like I said before, this is where you really need um, that imagery. So as I move the drone around, watch, you can kind of see it on the screen there, moving left, forward and back, left and right. Cool, so at least I kind of know the vicinity by looking at my home point of the controller where I am. We're just gonna try a few simple waypoints. So click on this, try to click on this orange thing again. There we go. So let's do a little mission. So the second one is a mission. That first one was just flying to one spot that third one is a grid you can just do boundaries and then it will take pictures like if you're trying to do mapping and stuff it'll actually take pictures within that vicinity so that's pretty cool and it looks like this one is actually an orbit so you can just plop a point and maybe orbit it let's try that maybe that's an easier way to do it so i'm just going to click on myself here and let's go ahead and save it so you can just name the point. Let's just name it one. 
You could probably do this when the drone's like actually on the ground. You don't have to waste your battery. I just pressed that little icon. Okay, there you go. There's a way you can do orbits. Did you see what I did there? That was an easier way. I just clicked on whatever I wanted to orbit. So that, man, like I can't say enough, that satellite map would have been so much better. So if you're on a boat and you can see that little controller icon, just click on that guys, go into this mode and look how much better that is and how much easier it was than trying to get all that custom settings and follow me orbit stuff down where you have to hover over your point. So that's working really well. And let's see if we can just stop it. So I just put, a, put in a little bit to the left and it stopped and now it's kind of moving back on its own. I don't know what it's doing. Um, that actually made the gimbal get all wonked out. So how do we stop this? That's not, I don't like that. That's not good, man. It's kind of getting out of control. I'm going to try to come back. Whoa. Yeah, this is getting weird. <laughs> so how do I stop this? I'm gonna switch really quickly into Addy and then back into GPS. Okay, so be careful with that. When you're getting out of that mode, man, or when you interrupt it, it got pretty weird. And there goes my video again, freezing up. Come on, Swell Pro. Let's get that right. Hey, I'm stuck in the picture in my FPV. <laughs> so that that's really unfortunate. Now it's slowly coming back. So I don't know, maybe an overheating problem in there. Who knows? Going back into my map and then going into these settings again. Let's try a little mission like I wanted to do. And let's just do a simple little mission around my point. I want to be kind of close because I can't really see. It would be nice to see trees and buildings in this imagery. We'll just do like a circle. And... You can face the camera wherever you want, of course. Still recording. And I'll just, maybe I'll, yeah, I'll just see what happens. Let's just press play. All right, so this is where we would have had to choose our GPS points. It looks like it's facing and it's going up to a designated altitude. So there's a default altitude for these points. So it just finished them. And it looks like it's just gonna stay up there. Looking at my uh, vertical speed, not really coming down. So you're going to have to come back down after it finishes that. Let's rotate the camera all the way down again. You can kind of see what's going on. Okay, come back down. Woo. Okay, so that's how these things work, guys. Okay, so remember when you're doing that orbit, boy, really be careful. And like I was saying, a lot to be desired with this digital FPV connection, unfortunately. It glitches out and it takes a while to come back. So they're gonna need to work on that. So we were doing these kind of plans, that was the flight plan there and if I click on the point you can see how the default was at 30 meters so that's why it went so high and then it just stopped okay so you can adjust that all the way down to 10 if you wanted to and then press check to save it at each point so just a quick little demo there really liked remember that orbit was amazing except when you tried to interrupt it so be very careful there let's get up here and let's do some camera shots before this battery dies Looking at the controller and we've got 12 minutes left. So I don't want to fly any over any houses. So it'll come back and just go right above. Get some height here and then go into camera and try to take some shots. Get out of the audible sound of that thing because that is a loud one. 
So this drone, you're not going to be able to do any like screen clicking to focus and stuff. It's just kind of like a overall focus. Okay guys, so I'm going to stop recording on the Swell Pro camera. Switch into camera by just clicking on the camera icon or you could just press the camera icon here. And let's take a photo of that um, West Maui over there. Boom, clicking on the screen to take a photo. Or rotate the camera down a little bit. Whoops. I want to rotate it to the left or you could do this right here this button here clicking it and we can take our pictures that way as well so this isn't going to be much to look at because it's so incredibly brown here in this area you wouldn't think this is hawaii would you i'm just going to take a photo uh directly below it right here at our flying area and picture and I'll have those popping up on the screen guys so you can see the quality of them I do think I have a maxed out if you look over here 12 megapixel is the max you can go and I have them in 16 by 9 so I'll have that up as well let's rotate back up really want to make sure this screen is still recording yep rotate back up a little more jitter in the FPV and let's rotate this around so we can have kind of the sun to the back. And let's take a couple more photos just so you can see how they look. One there. Again, I'll have them popping up. There is the Haleakala Mountain by Coolest School. And let's just get a straight up the mountain. There's Poli Poli up there where I like to film. Get one more shot right there. Cool, so uh, we'll start recording again. Hitting that on the screen to record. Looked like the gimbal just did something. <laughs> just rotated to the right a little bit. Come back down. Come down here, and you know what I really wanna do is I wanna get into sport mode really quick and see how much faster it goes in sport mode. So. We'll go um, back into custom. Oh no, get out of there. You see what happens is it thinks it's in like orbit mode or something and if you switch right into custom. So I think what I need to do is I'll go, are we recording? There, now we're recording. I guess I wasn't recording there. Okay, so I'll go into um, the options and i want to press sport mode confirm okay so that should make us go a little faster i want to just test this it's taking a little while to think about it that's not good see if i while it's thinking if i switch this back down to custom nope it's going back into its orbit crap okay custom all right so it's like the drone has a firmware lockup to get into sports mode how do I get out of this man I don't know not too great go into Addy mode it's just gonna blow with the wind that kind of turns off the GPS stabilization switch it back in it comes back you see that let me just show you that close up real quick so if I go ahead and switch out of GPS into Addy mode watch the drone will just blow with the wind but I can fly faster well let's just see how fast we can fly in this mode full pitch forward Yeah, maybe I don't want to do this, guys. I'm going to go back into GPS. And come back. Yeah, that wasn't smart. I'll go ahead and come back. And um, I want to figure out what's up with this screen here before I do anything else. So, you know, just so you guys know how this thing really works. Letting off. That's why it's great to be in GPS mode because it just will stick into its position when you let off the controls. 
So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out of this app. Let's see what happens if it's flying and I get out of the app. Swell Pro close. Can I still fly it? Yep. So the app doesn't really doesn't really care if the app's running and you can still fly it manually. You don't even have to have your phone, guys, on here to fly this thing. Reconnect to the app or reload the app. Let's see if we can reconnect while it's flying here. That would be a good little example. All right, so it's still recording and all that stuff. Well, cool. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Let's go into Addy mode. And let's just fly out here into the sunset as fast as we can. The battery's getting low. 16 meters per second is as fast as it can go. Oh, it's starting to go faster. 17, about 17. Okay, click back in the GPS. Looks like our video stopped, so I'm gonna start that again. And let's just go ahead and do a return to home, guys. So well, this will be the final return to home since, you know, it's uh, it's taking so long. Let's see, while it's returning to home, can I pitch my camera down and stuff? Yep, I can pitch down and up. Let's see if I can turn it left and right with a left roller. Cool, so you have these controls. What I would have liked to see, guys, is you see how you can move the camera left and right um, separately? There's no central zone, so you don't really know where the center is. All you can do is go all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and then go back and kind of guess where the center is. So I would have liked to seen maybe some kind of, you know, reticle somewhere that can match up to, to know just where the center of the screen is. Cause you gotta, kind of got to just guess where your center is. Actually, let's see that felt like it clicked in. Nope. Would have been maybe cool if you could click these in and it would recenter that camera, but that's not the case. So, Anyway, I guess this will be the final um, landing. Let's just see how close it kind of gets to our landing zone. And we'll call it a day, you know. Those are all the main functions I wanted to test. You know, there's a very few couple more. You know, if we look at these things, cruise mode and stuff like that. Do you see where it's going to land now? Right there. All right, and that video, man, geez, a little bit to be desired with that choppy video. Anyway, I think that's all I wanna do with this thing today. Let's see how far away it is from our uh, launch point. So just a rough one, two, three, four to five feet away from the launch pad, which isn't bad. It doesn't have any cameras on the bottom or sensors like other drones do to really get imagery of where it's uh, launched and then try to re-land on that, kind of like, um, you know, like the Mavics do and stuff. Anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap it up for the flight test. My first maiden flight of the Splash Drone 4. Hello. Hey, what's up, Will? Hey, everybody, remember Will? Hello. Hey, man, um, guess what? I got something from, for you today. It's uh. it's a RC vehicle. So I'm gonna show it to you afterwards, okay? Cause you helped me with a couple of my videos. Yeah. I wanna make sure you get something cool, all right? Yeah, man, I'm gonna do a range test right after this with that K1. So hang around. All right, guys, wow. So if anything, that was really fun to test this. And this is definitely a beast. Keep in mind that this is not a little toy drone. This is an expensive, could can be dangerous drone. And the main reason you'd wanna buy this that I can see, either if you have a boat and you wanna like launch from the water or get some boating shots, or if you're like a boating person and stuff like that, just make sure you have fresh water to really soak this thing after you get around the salt water or you really want to fish because with these drop mechanisms right these things can hold a lot of weight we did go ahead and drop this heavy dang battery from the bottom of this you could hear it really ramp up the motors to try to keep its height when we we're flying this battery around the drop mechanism worked great i do kind of like that how it just when you do hold down the button to do the drop it just opens and then closes, so you don't have to keep pressing it twice to open it and close it. Let's talk about some of the negative things. Um, so remember, 
the FPV, the digital FPV they're going with now, a little bit wonky as it flew a little bit more. You could see the lockups, the garble in the screen, and that was at close range, remember? So man, they really need to kind of work on that. That was really to be desired there. Um, a little bit wonky, remember when I was trying to use the waypoint mission to do an orbit? It did really well there. And I would honestly use that if I were you to, to do the orbits instead of hovering over like your boat or whatever. That was really wonky to kind of get out of that map orbit mode. So really be careful with that. It's almost like you had to switch out of the GPS mode and back into it to cancel it, get out of the map as soon as possible. Um, some of those other modes were kind of cool, but kind of gim gimmicky. The speed was definitely fast enough. The power was great. Imagery for the maps, there's no imagery yet. And also, I wanted to have it in imperial settings so we could kind of see feet, miles, and miles per hour and stuff like that for the speed. You know, those of us in the U.S. kind of like that to see that on the screen just because it's easier for us to understand that, at least at least for me. You guys be the judge of the camera, like how the, the camera looked, you know, how I'll have the pictures popping up there and all that stuff. But overall, it's definitely a step up from the original. Um, the battery life I had popping up on both of those flights. The main things, like I said, guys, if you're on a boat and you want something that can handle the water or you're fishing, I definitely recommend this one for those two reasons. Remember, I have that other camera as well. It's that camera with a high intensity LED light. So we're going to use that in night fishing. I'm going to take this thing out night fishing, drop some Alua rigs and see how this whole thing looks. Anyways, guys, definitely a force to be reckoned with. Remember that even the controller is waterproof as long as you have all these ports closed. So if you're on a boat and you have like one of those waterproof phones as well, this would actually be a really good setup. So if you got mist or rain on it, you can fly this thing in the rain, even the controller now, as long as your phone is, is waterproof, like I was saying. Or you can actually just, if you drop this in the salt water or fresh water, this won't break. So maybe we'll try that in our ocean review. And that's coming up. Go ahead and check out the series. I'll have the link in the description as well as where you can find the Splash Drone 4 um, if you want to look at the pricing and all the options that come with it. And I'll also have my series pop up here on the top right of the screen so you can check that out. I know that was long and kind of intense at times, but really if you're dropping this kind of money on a drone like this, you want to know how it really performs before you drop that kind of money and i hope i showed you that anyways thanks for tuning in and i'll see you in the ocean test and all that other stuff we're doing with it thanks for watching